guys, welcome to another video. Today it is part three of the Butterick 6554 sew along. So today we're gonna to be finishing the bodice, we're gonna be attaching the sleeves and the facings. So let's get started. Step nine and stitch the sleeve front to the sleeve back at the under arm edge so the short edge is there and again I am going to do that with a French seam which means sewing together sewing together the wrong sides first at a quarter of an inch trimming pressing and then turning it out and sewing the right sides together at three eighths of an inch and again I'll show you as I go but you want to pin a front sleeve to a back sleeve wrong sides together at the very short edge and bear in mind I have shortened my sleeves by two inches so your sleeve might look a little bit different to mine if you've not done that so it's the shorter edge and you're going to match up the notches which are there and we're going to sew that at a quarter of an inch we're going to repeat that for the other sleeve as well once you've sewn your seam at a quarter of an inch, you need to trim that in half. You then need to press it so that the right sides are together and we're then going to sew this at three eighths of an inch. We're going to repeat the process for the other sleeve as well. So I've sewn the seam at three eighths of an inch. Now we want to press these seams towards the front, which means towards the piece of the sleeve with one notch, not the double notch. The double notch is the back, single notch is the front. And we're going to press these towards the front because when we've pressed the side seams of our dress towards the back so that means that we're going to be able to nest these seams when we come to sew them together. Okay so once we've sewn our underarm seam together on the sleeve we're then going to do step 10 which is with right sides together pin sleeve into armhole edge matching seams and symbols baste stitch stitch again at quarter of an inch away in the seam allowance press seam towards sleeve. Okay guess what we're going to do we're going to French seam it. So I've actually sewn mine in so I have got the wrong side of the sleeve to the wrong side of the bodice and as you can see here because we press the seam allowance on the bodice back and the seam allowance on the sleeve forward we can nest that seam in there and I have matched up the front notches but the back notches really don't match by quite considerable amount that's the notches on the sleeve and that's the notches on the dress bodice um, but the edges match the, the rest of the not uh, the rest of the markings match so don't worry about the back notches of the sleeve other than to give you the indication that that is the back of the sleeve and the back of the bodice the front notches do match up which is nice and again I have sewn with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I am going to trim this down press it and then sew it again at three eighths of an inch and I've done that for both sides I have French seamed the sleeves in so that it's all lying nice and flat on this side and we need to press the seam allowance towards the sleeve so I'm going to go and do that now so the seam allowance is, seam allowance is all going to get pressed towards the sleeve. So once we've pressed the seam allowance towards the sleeve which I've just done we then need to sew the top of the sleeve together and again we're going to French seam that. You want to pin wrong sides together along this top edge and sew it at a quarter of an inch, trim, press, turn it around and sew it at three eighths of an inch. Once I've finished sewing my French seam on the top of the sleeve seam I have pressed it towards the back and I'm now going to stay stitch the neck edge which is skipping step 12 but before I start moving things around I'd like to get the neck edge stay stitched so I'm moving on to step 13 to get that done I'm then going to go back and do the narrow rolled hem. Okay, so I'm going back to step 12, which is make a 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter narrow hem at lower edge of sleeve. So the pattern has a glossary and it does give you a definition of what it means by the things it asks you to do. So a narrow hem is turn in hem, press, easing in fullness if necessary, open out hem, turn again so raw edge is long crease, press, turn a long crease and stitch. Now I'm going to do mine slightly differently. I can find it because I just prefer and I find it much 
I find it much easier, especially with a fabric like this, to stitch a line of stitching, which I've done 3 eighths of an inch from the raw edge. I've then gone to the ironing board and I've pressed it over so that the line of stitching that I've done is rolled to the inside. I'm then going to stitch along there again with my blind hem foot, which looks like this. And I'm going to use this foot because it has this guide in it here. So I'm going to use this guide to run against the edge of my sleeve so I'm going to get a nice line of even stitching around the edge of the sleeve again. I'm then going to trim off the excess because I'm turning a larger curve into a smaller curve so I don't need to, I don't want to have to ease it in so I'm going to trim it off and then going to press it under again and stitch it down so that's actually a narrow rolled hem and I think with this light fabric that's going to work really well and I would find it much although this holds a crease really really well which is great I would find it much easier to do it this way rather than trying to fold it and fold it again and then go around and sew it. So I've, as I say, this is the first step. I have sewn a line of stitching three eighths, three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge. I've pressed it under so the stitching's on the inside and I'm now going to stitch that down again with my blind hem foot. I've run my second line of stitches next to the edge uh, and along the first line there so you can see it from this side a bit better. So that's very narrow close to the edge there. So I'm now going to trim this excess off and again close to this line of stitching here and then press that up and f do another line of stitching which will finish this hem. And obviously I'm going to repeat that for the other sleeve as well. I've trimmed off the excess close to the edge so I'm now going to go and press this under again and then I can stitch it down to finish the hem on the sleeves. And again, I've used my blind hem foot and I have just run another line of stitching across along the edge of the hem. So I ran the guide on the foot here. I have my line of stitching there and it's given me a finished hem on the sleeves. So the next thing that we're going to do is move over to step 14, which is finish unnotched and shoulder edges of front facing. With right sides together, pin front facing to bodice front matching symbols, stitch as shown. So we need to finish this edge and this edge of the facing, which I'm going to do with bias binding. So we want to bind the edge without the notch and the notch is here and then we want to bind the top edge and the bottom edge is the one that has the 5 eighths of an inch sort of notch in the end and then go straight the top edge is the straight one and I've actually rounded the corner on it because that way I can use bias binding to finish off the top and the side all in one go so I have sewn the bias binding onto the right side of the binding with the wrong side of the facing I've sewn it in the a ditch that's created by the fold all the way along and then I am now going to turn it over and around and then I'm going to put my blind hem foot back on because I find that I get a nice even line of top stitching with this and I'm going to top stitch the binding down. So once we've finished the unnotched and shoulder edges of the front facing we then need to pin it right sides together down the front bodice and we're going to match the symbols. So there's the small dot and the large dot at the bottom and then there's a large dot at the top. That corresponds to where the sleeve has been inserted into the bodice. So I'm going to sew from this, the sleeve seam down to the bottom of the facing at 5 eighths of an inch. And I've pinned it all on both sides so I'm going to do that now. Okay so step 15 is to open out one folded edge of bias tape and press lightly. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't find that it makes it any easier to handle. This is fairly well behaved stuff. The next is extending ends 3 eighths of an inch 1 centimeter. Pin bias tape to neck edge. Place in crease along seam line. Stitch along crease. Trim seam allowance even with bias tape. The stay stitching line that I put in is 3 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge. So I'm going to match up the edge of the bias tape with the edge of the stay stitching that I've put in and then stitch that 
uh, all the way around the neckline. So I'll show you as I go. So I've extended the raw edge of this over uh, one centimeter or three eighths of an inch over the facing, and I'm now stitching this so that the raw uh, the the edge of the bias binding meets up with the edge of the stay stitching that I've done and I'm stitching in the ditch along there and then when I get down to this edge of facing I will leave an overlap there of one centimeter or three eighths of an inch as well. Okay so I've got the bias binding extending into the facing and if you look on the other side this is the line of stitching that's putting the facing onto the bodice and then this is the line of stitching that's just attached the bias binding so they have met up which is what you want to aim for. So the next thing that we need to do is trim off the excess seam allowance here. So we're going to trim up to the line of stay stitching and I'm going to start clipping the seam allowance from here and I will follow that the whole way around. Okay, so I have trimmed off the excess of the binding. I'm also going to trim down these seams here because this is getting quite bulky. We've got one, two, three, four, four layers of fabric in there. So I am going to trim those down. And then the next step is going to be to understitch the facing and the binding to the seam allowance. So I'm going to trim first and then understitch. Okay, so I have understitched the facing and the bias binding the whole way around and I'm now going to go and press it all underneath. And you can see why you extended the bias binding under the facing because that's all now nicely finished. And when we have pressed everything, we're going to tack the facing to the seam allowance to keep it down. But yes, need to go press everything now. So give it a good press and you want to kind of roll the bind the facing to the inside so that you can just see a little bit of the outer fabric and the understitching is is there so that the, it will keep the facing rolled through to the inside which is what we want okay so step 18 says turn front facing and bias tape to inside turning out ties press Baste bias place and tape on outside, stitch close to basted edge on inside, tack front facing to seam allowance. Okay, so if I just left the bias binding unfolded, it would actually be quite deep and I don't want my, my hem or my stitching line to be that far into my bodice. So what I have done is I have folded up the bias tape so that it meets the stitching line previously done and I've made sure that everything is lying nice and flatly on the right side of the garment and I'm then going to stitch I'm going to top stitch this down using my blind hem foot again to get a nice even line of stitching just making sure to keep pulling everything um, nice and flat on the garment side and I just think this is going to look so much nicer and once I've done that I am then going to tack the edge of the facing to the seam allowance of this I think this is the sleeve seam allowance here so yeah I'm going to tack that down just to make that sure that stays inside okay so I have stitched that down and it's now created a nice finished edge on the outside and a nice finished edge on the inside and I much prefer it being a slim profile of binding rather than the thicker one which I kind of I, I don't know I can't the instructions aren't overly clear but it does look like it's quite wide that bias binding there and it hasn't been they don't mention anything about turning it in on itself just turning the tape to the inside so I prefer this look and it matches in with the facing so now what I need to do is tack the facing to the seam allowance of the sleeve and then the bodice is done until we've obviously attached the skirt and then we can put the buttonhole in. So I'm going to tack this down by hand now and then I'm going to move on to making the skirt. 
If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!